Hey everybody, it's uh, Joe here. So we're back again. Uh, we're doing a video, a couple of videos now, one of eight on interview questions you may have come across if you're going for an interview and they're asking about Python. So if you've been, been to this channel before, there's our social media channels there where we post these videos and interact with anybody who's any questions. So happy to have you on board and uh, please subscribe uh, and to any of those of you use those mediums. So going to, today we're going to talk about introduction and Python overview. So you basically, when you go to an interview, you maybe ask some questions, and this is the basic, basically an introduction, and maybe some general questions you may be asked. In future videos going to be talking about dictionaries and lists, so on and so forth, a couple of other things. So today is just a general overview of Python and what it's all about. So let's get rid of this and move this over. So what we're going to topics we're going to cover are what are key features, the limitations of Python. What is Python good for? Uh, what are the data types that Python support? So in order to you to be at least have some show some level of knowledge about Python, these are some of the questions you should at least have some understanding of. Uh, but they're not exclusive. So I wouldn't say that there's there's other I wouldn't say that these are exclusive, as I said, there's other um things you can add in if you feel as you feel fit. Um there may be uh, you may find them as part of your research. So let's have a look at the first slide. So what are the key features of Python? Well, essentially it's free and open source. So you can download it and use it for free uh, as you please. Um, you know, as it's free, obviously they do look for donations uh, and based contributions toward the running the management of the development of the code and the system. So obviously if you have a bit of money, please uh, subscribe to them. You'll see it on their website. But because of that, um, it's well supported as well. So um, you can go on to a number of websites where they, a lot of people have, go with questions and it may be the same question that you have and get your answer there. So it's well supported and I recommend um, you do use it. It's easy because it's easy to code. Um, I found it since I've started learning it, um, I've tried some other programming languages and while they're well supported as well, I've just found them a bit more harder to understand and follow when you're trying to do something and logically i find python is just easier easier to to use and implement and it's well structured and how it's designed um so i said point three it's easy to understand the code written as it uses indents a lot as well um so you'll find on python um indentation and capitalization are two things that are basically within the um, program and it's not getting away from it so sometimes you may get some errors and it could be to do with either an indentation, pro indentation problem or a capitalization problem just something to be aware of you can run on any platform so um it doesn't need to be tweaked or changed um regards where it's when it's run on different platforms this is one of the great things all you do is you go on to the website and basically when you're download just tell it what platform you're using it and it will come in but you should be able to do the exact same thing regardless of whatever platform you're using which is brilliant you don't have to adapt it or make any changes uh, to it and it's an interpreted languages um something to consider is what happens with python is it essentially when you go to run it it basically goes and executes it immediately and basically runs it line by line and that's um basically what is called an interpreted language so there i kind of picked out four or five five key features there for you that you may use to explain what python's all about and as you said at the start there may be other um scenarios or other pieces of data you may want to use so this is just to help you along to give you a, a general overview. So let's move on to the next slide. So what are the limitations of Python? It's like anything, any application program, you're going to have limitations, okay? So what are these in Python? It's speed is number one. So it has been known to be slow. Um, the reason for that is, well, one of the reasons, there's maybe many, but certainly one of them is because it's an interpreted, it's an interpreted language. So if you are developing a, a, an application or a program and you have a lot of lines of code, the basically Python language has to basically go down to each line as it's executing and then basically um, execute them as it goes along and then basically give you the output that you desire. Now, that that's, may sound uh, okay. Some people may say, well, that's not an issue. 
it is an issue if it goes into thousands of lines of code. Um, so probably in the design of anything you're building, you need to take account of what you're designing, how quick it needs to be. And I'm not necessarily, you don't use, say you don't use Python. It's just that speaking be slow, the more lines you have, but there's ways around that. You can create modules, functions, which can actually maybe um, remove repetitive lines and speed things up so there's ways around it so just in your design uh, certainly speed is one thing that you need to think about when you're using python so you may be asked about the compatibility of versions one of the things you'll find um if you're moving from versions to versions in python they do change some of the functionality and basically they will um make um some pieces of logic not work anymore or might be slightly changed that when you say move from say 3.7 to 3.8, for example, something that you were using in 3.7 might be in 3.8, but it might work a little bit different. You have to basically then go and uh, change your, your code in 3.8 to get it to work. Now, that's fine, but if you have that appearing in a lot of code and you have to rewrite it, um, basically all the different, if you go through the code and rewrite parts of it, that can cause you issues uh, with time and basically development of something you're trying to do. So something to be conscious of that if you take a piece of code or or take something that something's written on an older version, if you're trying to bring it into the most recent version, it could be issues, not, not unsurmountable. You can fix them, but it could take you time to resolve them. And the final thing here on this slide is memory consumption. So Python, again, is uh, uses a lot of memory um, when you're developing something so you need to think about again and it comes back to what i said with the speed as well in the design phase because you use a lot of memory what's the best way to design something and it really depends how you're going to use it so you know if there are scenarios where you can create python executable and it could run on a server now if that's a fast server that actually could help to speed up the process of executing that code so it might help with the speed and might help with the memory consumption but just remember uh, if you're ever asked in an interview one of the things you need to be careful about it with python is that it's actually memory consumption can be a lot and it's something you need to take into account in any design phase so let's move on to the next slide what is it good for? Right, so going on, we've gone on about the first bit of slide about Python's limitations and uh, a general overview. But actually, what would you use it for if you're asked this question? Well, there's a couple of things. Um, it can be used, uh, it is used, not can be, it is used for AI and machine learning and it quickly provides insights into your data to aid automation. So there was a lot of modules within um, Python which are really, really useful for looking at a state of data and giving you information on it, uh, which allows you to build, help you to build a machine learning model or an, an AI um, system. So it is, it, it is good for looking at your data and interpreting it. If you are looking at image processing, if you want to basically say you want to take an image of something and uh, look at it, see what the characteristics of it, Python has a lot of really good modules and sections of it that allow you to basically look at that image and again give you image it gives you information on the image that can allow you to do something with that information. And a simple example is you want to just compare two images, it could quickly tell you if they're the same or they're not, or so on and so forth. So that's just one application of it. Uh, text text processing, so uh, natural language processing is another uh, area that's within the data analytics field. And Python, again, is very can be very good to help you with that text processing and understanding the text within um, a, a block of data or a, a large set of data, and it'll give you information back on that, uh, which will allow you to make a decision. So one of the really powerful things um, Python is good for, and this kind of ties in with back with point one, is statistical processing. So I have some modules called NumPy and SciPy, which can provide you with information which will help you with machine learning. So they are really powerful um, tools that I, I've used on and off, and some of my previous videos have used them, you'll see them there. So again, it's really helpful for that to allow you to take a set of data, process it, and give you some statistical information. And the final thing there is the automation. And basically, um, I've actually done this with some work I've done, is it allows you to automate certain things and just kind of remove those repetitive tasks 
that uh, you try to not do or do on a day-to-day -day basis. You just write a Python program from it, automate it, and basically run it, and it does the task. Gives you back a bit of time that you can go and focus on other development work. So let's just look at the next slide. And this is the final one. You may be asked, what are the data types of support? Okay, I'm just gonna generally, it's there on the screen, I'm not gonna go through each one. These are some types here, your numeric sequence, text sequence types, binary, set types, mapping type, type annotation, annotation types, and build type. Now, there are additional data types, um, and I'm gonna provide a link in the description, so please look at that. And that will go show you the additional data types here, and also show you, basically show you uh, information on these common data types. But it's important to understand the data types and how they're formed. Um, because remember that also the Python is dynamically typed. So essentially, if you put in um, so a variable called x equal to one, it automatically uh, defaults it to basically an integer value. But if you put x equal to one inside um, inverted commas, or commas, should I say, it then defaults that data type to a string. So just important that when you're going to an interview, under support and understand and explain the concept of the, how it's it's called dynamically typed. Okay, so in essence, that is our first video of Python, a Python overview inter, interview questions of typical questions you may get asked. I hope this has been used as I said at the outset. Our next video is going to be on dictionaries. So I'll uh, keep an eye out for that. If you haven't I said subscribed, um, please do subscribe and hit the alert button. It will tell you when this video is coming or when a new, sorry, when a new video has come and basically you'll be able to see it when it comes out. So thanks for visiting. Take care. I hope you're all keeping well and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.